Right, today we've got a Volkswagen Golf Mark 6. It's a 2009 model, so 13 years old. And it's got just over 124,000 miles on the clock. So the customer's bought the car in today, complaining of uh, grinding noise when braking, and thinks it's from the rear end. Now before I go too far, I'm going to grab a light. Um, luckily these wheels have got quite a bit of gaps in them and just take a quick provisional look at the disc and the pad that looks it's a little bit warm but that's um, still in good condition so I think she could be right about it being the back end now looking through here you can see that's been running metal on metal so it looks like the brake pad lining has worn right through to its backing so the driver's side rear brake the disc doesn't look fantastic it's quite rusty and got some funny looking marks on it and i can see that the brake pad in there is looking very low still got a little bit on there but obviously needs changing we need to get the back wheels off and have a closer look at that the front one on this side looks pretty much the same as the other front one I can see there's lots of uh, wear left in the pads and the discs are fine as well but I will check the inside faces once we get it up in the air right so the first thing we're going to want to do is to crack these wheel nuts loose but first I'm going to put the handbrake on for a moment now these have got plastic covers on them what I generally use is it's just like a bent screwdriver really big pick give them a wiggle and they come off <laughs> there we go uh, this is the locking wheel nut key I was talking about because you'll find one of the bolts on each wheel needs this to locate so you can use a breaker bar and in this case it's a 17 millimeter socket to crack it loose the other four are just standard bolts okay i'll carry on and do the other side Okay, so that's both of the rear wheels loose now, all the nuts are loose. I'm just going to pop the bonnet over. As we are working on the rear brakes, and we're going to wind the pistons in on the calipers, that means that the fluid from the calipers will come up to the um, reservoir under the bonnet. Now on this particular model, the brake fluid reservoir is a bit tucked away. That's it here. It's got a sensor wire on it, which lets you know if the fluid's low, it pings a warning on the dashboard, which would look like that yellow symbol on the cap. It's a little bit difficult to see there. So all I'm going to do now is loosen that cap, just anti-clockwise, and let it rest there. Uh, there's no tidy way of doing this, unfortunately. The fluid will more than likely come up and out of the bottle. Um, but we can deal with that afterwards. So I'll drop the bonnet down, just rest it down, and take the vehicle up to a working height. <coughs> Remembering to release the handbrake. Otherwise we're not gonna get the calipers off. Right, so fortunately I've got the luxury of a, a ramp. Um, you can do this job 
reasonably easily on the floor with a trolley jack. Um, the points at which you lift the car are the same as I'm using today. I've put some wooden blocks underneath. It's always a good idea to put one of those on a trolley jack. Um, you can see here the sill panel. It's a little bit thicker than along there. You can see a little gap there. But basically you need the piece of wood lining up with this. And it's generally in line with this join on the front door, which is the A pillar. It's a very strong part of the car. So that's the jacking point on the uh, Golf. On the back, it's quite similar. It's a little bit more difficult to see, but it is right under there. There's a lip hanging down, which you can see is in contact with the wooden block. Right, now we're at a uh, good height for taking the wheel off. You can use a, a wheel wrench or breaker bar, anything like that. Being as I've got one to hand, I'm going to use my impact gun. Um, all of these are loose. If you do use an impact gun, I wouldn't recommend using it on the locking wheel nut because they can shear off and then you're in a whole load of trouble. So these have already been cracked loose. <laughs> Before I take the last one out, these wheels sometimes, they can just fall off. So I always support it with my knee. On the other hand, it could be stuck on there. They do seize as well, being aluminium. <laughs> Luckily, that one's loose. Now you can see straight away, the score marks on the disc where the brake pad, all the lining has worn away and it's, it's metal on metal, which is creating the grinding noise. Um, I can't turn it either. So I'm fairly certain this caliper is seized or sticking. I'll go around the other side and uh, do the same there. So we've got the back wheels off. I'm just taking the car right up now so we can have a just a quick walk around under the car, visual inspection, and have a look at the front brakes, make sure nothing nasty is going on under there. So tires, while we're here, they're getting pretty close. That's a two millimeter marker bar. Uh, the legal limit's 1.6, so really once you get down to that, you could do with a new tyre, and it's got a few little splits around here where it's perishing. So I'll just make a note of that and let the customer know. Uh, the front brake, you can see the disc is shiny all the way across, so that's good. It's not chewed up like the rear ones. You can't really see a great deal of the pad there. Um, it looks fine from what I can see. I can get a little pick and have a feel and Make sure that's got enough on it. I'm pretty certain the problem lays at the back end, like the lady said. Underneath, there's not really a great deal to see because these cars do have a lot of plastic panels over them covering components. But as we go to the back end, here you can see the caliper. This is the handbrake cable, which operates on that lever. Um, now in the past I've had problems on Volkswagens where that lever doesn't return to its stop just there. I don't know if I can move it. So when you pull your handbrake that goes like that, it squeezes the brake on and they don't always return to the stop but I can see it has here. So I'm pretty certain the problem lays with inside the uh, caliper the piston will more than likely be corroded and seized on. Generally looking under the car, it looks fine. It's just a, uh, a quick visual look. As I said, it only came in for the rear brake noise. Okay, so I've had a better look at the front brakes and they all appear to be okay. Um, 
pretty sure the problem lays at the back end as we've said so we're just going to go back down halfway and uh, have a go at getting a seized caliper off right as we're removing the brake caliper ideally we need to crimp this rubber hose the flexi hose to stop the fluid coming out all the time and going everywhere now you can buy uh, brake pipe crimps but if you've got a pair of long nose mole grips I've found this works perfectly fine a couple of bits of rubber tube over the end squeeze it together and that does the job without damaging the flexi hose so next I'm going to crack this 11 millimeter uh, brake pipe union loose and the one down here while the caliper is still bolted to the vehicle so it's nice and sturdy it won't wobble around once they're loose there's a horseshoe shaped clip here which you can slide out towards you this way give this a wriggle around and that will come out and then uh, go on to loosening the two 13 mil bolts there's one at the top so you put a 15 mil spanner on there to hold that nut still undo that 13 and exactly the same down the bottom here the caliper might be a bit tricky to get off there it is because it's seized on so it's squeezing against the uh, brake disc quite tight it might take a bit of leverage but i'll give it a go okay so i'm going to start by using a brake pipe spanner which gives you a lot better purchase on the uh, union so you're less likely to slip off he says it takes a bit of wriggling because it's a bit rusty but then just give it a knock there we go that's come loose uh, the same with the bottom one there can be a little bit fiddly to get onto as you can see let's try that angle that's it that's cracked loose so that's going to take me a little while to unscrew those although it's loose they're fairly tight all the way out i shall carry on and do that in a moment but i'll just show you how to loosen the caliper itself so as i said there's a uh, 15 mil nuts there a 13 mil bolt there Again, you need to just crack it loose. There it goes. Then you can use the two spanners to uh, take the bolts out. Carry on like that. The bolt will come out. Hopefully, I can undo it with my fingers. Some of these have uh, thread lock on, so they're tight all the way out. Yeah, there we go. So that's one. I'll do the same on the bottom. Undo this pipe, take that out. And then I'll show you how to disconnect the handbrake cable. Okay, so everything we spoke about is loosened that's the bottom bolt out now same as the top one you may notice i've got rubber gloves on now because i don't want to spoil my baby soft hands it's always a good idea particularly when working with brakes because as you can see there is brake fluid dribbling out there and you've got the dust as well which isn't great so that's the uh small intermediate brake pipe off now we're going to uh, take this horseshoe clip out, which you should be able to put a screwdriver in and just twist and pop that out. There it goes. That just secures the uh, brake flexi hose in place. There you go, with a wriggle that comes out. not been out for a long time but that's got uh, a little notch in it 
which I'm not sure if you can see, it locates in a cutout in this bracket, so you can't get it around the wrong way. And as it's clamped here, we can just tuck that out of the way now and see if we can get this caliper off, which might be a bit of a struggle because it's holding the brake on slightly. That's fairly tight. There we go, that's off. Now we've got it round here, it's a little bit easier to see how the handbrake works. So when that you pull the cable, pull the lever, it pulls the cable, pulls the arm over, pushes this piston out, which in turn squeezes the brake pads together on the brake disc. This one, as we know, I'm pretty certain it's seized, but also something worth checking is that the pads are loose in the carrier because they can stick and when they stick on there they squeeze the disc and give the same uh, impression that the calipers seized and as you can see there that's worn right through to the metal as we saw the marks there so I'm going to have a go at uh, getting this cable out of here um, it might be worth a look behind that seal because uh, that should be all shiny and chrome. Which it doesn't look too bad actually. I will try a piston wind back tool on there first rather than jumping in and replacing the caliper because this pad does feel stuck. So that's going to need bit of leverage to get that out. There we go. So I'll get my uh, piston wind back tool, put it on there and see if that's free. So if you're going to attempt rear brake pads or pads and discs on the back of your Volkswagen Golf, you will ideally need a tool similar to this, which is a uh, piston wind back tool. Um, I'll show you how it fits together and what it does. There's several different adapters. I'm pretty sure it's this one that we need. So this locates in here. Like so. You wind this out, and then you should be able to twist this, and the piston will turn and also push it back in. But as suspected, that is pretty solid. Sometimes I'll put a spanner on there to get an extra bit of leverage. No, that's not moving. So I'm fairly certain the problem is the caliper. Um, now you can tackle this job without this tool, but it is very difficult and you probably need two pairs of hands. Um, you use a, uh, you could use a G clamp on here, but you also need to be able to twist this piston. So as you can imagine, it's very awkward just for one person to do. It's a bit fiddly for two and doesn't always work. Okay, so I've attempted a couple of times to wind that piston in. It just isn't moving. Um, I'm gonna replace the unit. You can buy an overhaul kit, which consists of these uh, rubber boots and the seals that go on the piston. Half the time you take the piston out and you find it's pitted and corroded anyway, so you're gonna end up with a leak or a problem. It's, it's normally just easier to change the unit. Um, at this stage, I'll need to disconnect this handbrake cable, which they can be a bit fiddly. So I'm hoping I can move the arm, take some tension off, and flip it out of there like that. Get my screwdriver back. Um, there's a couple of plastic tags, which you need to push in here like barbs, and then you can pull the cable through. 
see if they go. They might take a bit of a bit of persuading. I think that's it. Oh, that's one side. Yeah, there we go. That's off. There we go. That's one caliper off. Um, I'm going to take the disc off now. Move that out of the way. That's got a little Torx screw there. Now, a good tip is just to give it a whack. The shock should hopefully free it off if it's seized. So I've got a small gun with a Torx bit, but you can use a little ratchet with a bit. In fact, I'm gonna give that a little tap in there. I don't really wanna round that bolt out. There we go. Just one little bolt. Um, Sometimes these are stuck on here. Just work your way around tapping it. It will come loose. Luckily on these Volkswagens and Audis, you don't have to take the caliper carry off, carrier off. They just about fit out, but it's still in place. So that saves undoing another two fixings around the back here. You can see the bolts sticking through. They usually seize up and they can be very tight as well. So I'm going to get a wire brush, have a good scrape up on these surfaces at the bottom, the same at the top, which the brake pads should slide freely on. That inside one, as, as you saw, was sticking. Um, something else to check is make sure these sliders are free. Sometimes if the uh, rubber boot gets a little hole in it, the water gets in and they seize up. Again, giving uh, the same symptoms as a seized caliper. Okay, I'll crack on with that. Okay, so I've just got a, a regular screwdriver, just having a bit of a scrape. You can see it's quite rusty, you get quite a few flakes on there. Something else which I use, I'm not looking to uh, take any thickness off, just to take the rust off, just give it a gentle go over with a fire. You don't need to go mad at it with this, just to clean the surface rust off. And uh, give it a bit of a brush up. I'll do the same with the top, and then we'll start putting things back together. Okay, so here's the new parts we'll be fitting. Here's the new brake caliper. I haven't gone for main agent parts. I generally use a motor factor. There's plenty of them about. Um, if you're contemplating a job like this, it's worth giving them a ring. They'll ask for your registration number. They'll be able to look your vehicle up and tell you if they've got the bits in stock before you start putting everything apart. Um, usually you can just go there and buy them over the counter, particularly with the Volkswagen Golf. They're quite a popular car. Um, so yeah, caliper pads, which come with new bolts with the thread lock on them. Um, okay, so the disc. I've cleaned up the caliper carrier. Let me take the disc. I'm just going to make sure these pads fit nicely now. And as you can see, they slide like they should do. There, and the inner one would go in there. Nice and free. So they won't get stuck. The next thing I need to do is make sure surface which the disc is going on is as clean as possible you don't want any uh, muck underneath there it's pretty clean anyway if they're a bit rusty just get a wire brush on there and clean them up as best you can now I can get the disc back on same way it came off remember you need to line up the uh, bolt hole, 
There it is. goes in there. Doesn't need to be super tight, just nipped up. It's only to hold your disc in place while the wheel isn't on there. So once your wheel goes on, that clamps up tight and squashes it all together. The next thing I'll do is grab a pair of brake pads. Make sure they're all the same. Sometimes they have a little bobble sticking out on the back which needs to line up with these little cutouts in the piston. Um, in this case, I'm pretty sure that they are all the same. Yeah, there's no bubble there. So, next thing I'll do is remove the backing. I've got a bit of self-adhesive on there to stop them rattling around too much. But also, it's a good idea to put a bit of uh, copper grease on the surfaces that are going to touch to hopefully prevent them from uh, getting stuck again like the old ones were. That'll do. Don't need to go mad with it. Well, sitting there nicely. It, lovely. Next we can uh, take the new caliper and start reassembling that. Okay, so here's a new caliper. It's got a plug in there which you'll want to put out. That's just to keep the thread clean, stop any muck going in. Um, now calipers also come with this warning. Do not operate the handbrake lever before <laughs> fitting and applying pressure. Basically you don't want to pull that right back because it will push the piston out and can upset the mechanism inside. Um, so ideally we need to bolt this on, get the brake pipe back in, fill it up with fluid, bleed it, pump the brake pedal so the piston comes out to where it needs to be resting against the pads and then fit the handbrake cable last, which is gonna be a bit tricky because it's right back there. But we'll give it a go. those bits they often pop out and you have to push them back in so the caliper is now you're gonna to have to push it in because it sits against these spring clips they try and force it off of the pads the caliper pushes the pads in place so I usually um, take one bolt you can tilt the caliper get the top one started That's in there loose. And then you can push this down. And hopefully get the bottom one started as well. Might have a bit of wriggle. That's it, that's started. So the caliper's in place. Um, I will put the cable in that part. But as I said, I'm not going to connect it up just yet. We'll leave that there ready to go. Uh, we can take the brake pipe, remembering to line up the keyway there. That's it, that's in. Horseshoe clip, which goes with that tab pointing down. With that pushed in, should slide back in there. That will need a little tap. Where'd that go? We'll spend about half an hour looking for that now. Right, clip retrieved. That's better. That's back in there. Now we can uh, work on this brake pipe. Um, be careful how you do these because you don't want to cross thread them and damage the thread, particularly in that caliper there.
do it up as much as you can with your fingers before you get the spanner on there. Okay. Right, they're all in place. I'm going to carry on and nip these up, the spanner, do up the top fixing and the bottom fixing, and then we'll have a go at bleeding it. Okay, so a couple of things about brake fluid before we actually bleed the caliper. Um, now, it's a good idea to make sure you've got a new sealed container of brake fluid. If it's been sitting around on the shelf for a long time, it's been open, it can absorb moisture. Um, and obviously you don't want that in your brake system, that will make the pedal very spongy, cause corrosion, all kinds of problems. Um, there are different specifications of brake fluid. A majority of vehicles on the road will use DOT4, but your local parts agent will be able to tell you what your car takes in particular. Sometimes it does say on the uh, bottle itself, but I'm pretty sure most average cars take dot four um, now when you bleed the brakes you can do as I do where I just crack the bleed nipple let it run down um, then afterwards lock the bleed nipple off and just rinse it off with some water that that will dissolve all the brake fluid off alternatively you can make yourself a simple bleed bottle any container and a bit of hose just to plug onto the bleed nipple um, brake fluid is also a very good paint stripper so try and avoid getting that on any of the bodywork if you do get it anywhere again just use some water and a soft tissue or cloth to wipe it off um, so before we start here start bleeding the brakes I'm going to top up the reservoir I've got a smaller tub of uh, brake fluid usually the reservoirs are a lot more accessible than this as you can see i've had to put a funnel there that runs in a tube down to the reservoir where there is a maximum mark so i'm going to top that up which could be a little bit messy but like i said if you do spill any just wash it off with some water That should be enough to keep us going. I will check that again halfway through. Okay, so the top and the bottom fixings are done up tight. The brake part unions are nipped up tight. Um, I'm going to remove this clamp now so the fluid can start filling up the chamber in the pist behind the piston. So we need to um, loosen this bleed nipple which isn't very tight on a new caliper. I'll just undo it a little bit. So once you start to see fluid bubbling up out the top of this bleed nipple here, I don't know if you can see it, it'll bubble up and it'll dribble down and you'll get a few bubbles coming out. That's when you know it, it's full of fluid. Um, so we'll get to that stage. I'll show you what that looks like anyway. So as you can see, brake fluid has started dripping out now you can see on the blade nipple there it's coming out the top I like to um, just crack the blade nipple off and leave it to do its thing I know a lot of people pump the brake pedal which is fine I'm sure it's okay but I know for sure with older cars when I've done that in the past you run the risk of uh, ruining the seals in the master cylinder because you're pushing that pedal all the way to the floor I don't like that. Sometimes you end up replacing the master cylinder. So if you've got a little bit of patience, it's a good idea just to crack that loose and let it do its own thing. Generally, all the air will find its way out. Sometimes when you drive the car afterwards, you think, well, oh, the pedal could be better. And it, after you've driven the car and pumped the pedal and used the brakes a bit, come back and just crack that bleed nipple off and you might get a few air bubbles out. But nine times out of 10, it's fine doing it this way. Okay, so now the brake caliper has been bled. I've nipped up the bleed nipple down here and put the little dust cover back on, which comes with the new caliper. Now that the piston is pushed out, because I've pumped the brake pedal hard, so it, 
the disc still turns, but you can hear the pads rubbing on it. That's perfect. That's normal. So now I need to try and attach this handbrake cable back into the arm. So I'm going to leave a across off the suspension hopefully enough that's it there it goes that's back in place there we go okay so now we're at the stage where the calipers bolted on brake pipes back in it's all bled handbrake cables on um, it's all as it should be before I put the wheel on, the last thing I like to do is just have a quick visual double check and just hang a spanner on there. Make sure everything's tight, particularly being brakes, you can't be too careful. Always try and use the uh, ring end of the spanner where you can. If you use the open end, you've got more chance of uh, rounding things off and you definitely don't want that. And the uh, lead nipple, which just needs to be nipped. You want to go snapping that off. That's it. Uh, we're good to put the wheel back on. Grab a bolt and a socket because they're quite deep in there. You struggle just to do it up with your fingers. That's it. I'm going to zip those two up with a gun. Not too tight. <laughs> Locking wheel nut key, I think I've left on the other side. There we go. Put that in there. Now, don't overdo the locking wheel nut key. Just nip them up gently. When it's back on the ground, I'll check them with a uh, wrench. Okay, so once you've finished and you're happy, the brakes are bled and your brake fluid level is topped up, don't forget to put the cap back on. Nip it up. I we'll have spilled some brake fluid here. It's a little bit difficult not to spill it down in here. So once that's all nice and tight, just grab a small bank of water give it a little rinse off and that can drip on my head when I'm changing the oil okay so now the car's back on the ground I'm just gonna double check these wheel nuts because I didn't do them up very tight just want to nip them you can use a torque wrench but obviously that's something that not everybody's got um, you do generally get a feel for the tightness of a wheel bolt. Um, and we've got the locking one. Which I'll never do quite as tight as the other ones. As I said, that can break and you really don't want that happening. Um, once you're happy with that, Pop all your covers back on if you've got them fitted. Um, it's not a bad thing after a road test to recheck your wheel nuts. They may settle in, but they're normally always fine. 